Hi, I'm Fran. And I'm Hannah. We're from the Freshwater Habitats Trust. Today we're going to demonstrate the techniques we're using to survey for common toads and common frogs as part of the People Ponds and Water Pond Net project. Before we visit the pond, let's familiarise ourselves with the survey. In principle, Pond Net amphibian surveys are based on a survey of all the ponds in a one kilometre grid square because we're measuring the number of occupied versus unoccupied ponds. If you're surveying one of PondNet's fixed squares, the landowner permission will have been organised for you, and details of the ponds to survey will be given in your site information pack. Make sure you read the information in the pack carefully before you go out, because you might still need to call the landowner to let them know when you're coming. The site pack will also tell you about the ponds you do not have permission to visit. You'll find other useful information in the site information pack, including the best places to park your car and the best route to access your pond. You can also choose your own square, and we'd encourage you to visit as many ponds in your square as possible. You will need to organise the landowner permission yourself, but you can still access all the supporting material, survey forms and survey methods on our website. Whichever survey you're doing, make sure you read the health and safety information. Protect yourself from harm and protect your pond and its amphibians from invasive non-native species and disease. You can find a copy of these forms and other useful information in the volunteer starter pack. There is a link to this in the video description. Next, let's look at everything we'll need to prepare before we do the survey. The survey for common toad and common frog is simple and only requires a single daytime visit. You won't need a license, just a little bit of know-how to tell the difference between the two species. We've got a copy of the site information pack and a recording form for each of the ponds we're going to visit today. We've thoroughly cleaned and dried our boots and I've got a camera on my phone to take a picture of the pond or any of the amphibians we're hopefully going to see today. We're also bringing a pair of binoculars in case we spot an amphibian over the other side of the pond. Now let's look at how to tell the difference between the common toad and common frog. The common frog is a familiar pond dweller. They have smooth skin and are relatively athletic, jumping about if netted or caught. They have large hip bones needed to support their powerful leg muscles when the frog is in a sitting position. Common frogs are unlikely to present too many problems in identification, provided that you remember how variable they can be in coloration and markings. Funny coloured frogs, especially from garden ponds, invariably turn out to be common frogs. Common toad are another familiar pond animal, but let's recap on the main differences. Unlike frogs, common toads have rough, warty skins. They are less active than frogs, crawling rather than leaping, and so they don't have the large, humped hip bones of the frogs. It's worth noting that the skin looks less rough after they've been in the pond for a while, but it is still wrinkled and warty, not smooth like a frog. Now let's look at how to tell the difference between the tadpoles of each species. Although during their early stages, common frog and common toad tadpoles look fairly similar, small and black, once they start to grow they become very different in coloration. Frog tadpoles develop bronze spots and become very mottled, especially under their chins. Toad tadpoles remain very dark, almost black, right through the tadpole stage. Common frog tadpoles are usually larger than toad tadpoles, but there is a great deal of variation in growth rate between individuals, so body size is not as reliable in distinguishing the species. The behaviour of common frog and toad tadpoles is also different. Common frog tadpoles tend to stay hidden among vegetation and detritus. They are a tasty snack for a lot of predators, so they try to stay out of the way. Common toad tadpoles are distasteful to many predators and hence they swim in open water, sometimes in great numbers, forming shoals. Large numbers of black tadpoles swimming in shoals are likely to be common toad. We're only asking for a record of presence or absence for common frog and common toad, so once you've seen an adult, the eggs or the tadpoles, you can complete the record and move on to the next pond. There's no need for you to go into the water, you should only do the survey from the pond bank. Don't try to access the pond edge unless it's safe to do so. We're going to avoid steep edges and any sections where there is thick scrub. You can start your survey by doing a visual search for the adults. We're going to approach the pond quietly in the hope that we'll see frogs and toads at the surface or in the shallows. You can also look at some of the surrounding habitat. Looking under logs is a great way of finding amphibians. We've not seen any adults at this pond, so instead we're going to look for frog and toad spawn or tadpoles. We'll walk slowly around the pond and record what we see. Clumps of frog spawn are usually easy to see. We're interested in recording presence, but you can also count the number of clumps. One clump equals one female, so it's a good indication of population size. The best time to look for spawn is in February, but frogs can start breeding in early January through to March. Toad spawn is deposited in long strings, 
It's often harder to spot because toads like to wind their spawn around underwater plants. This also makes it difficult to count the number of strings, so we only record presence or absence for toad spawn. Common toads breed slightly later than common frog, so March is a good time to look for spawn, though you may find it in April in some years. We've not found any spawn at this pond, but we have found tadpoles for both common frog and common toad. Next, let's look at how to fill in the survey form to record the findings of your survey. We've put in the names of all the people who've been out to do the survey and the date that's really important for our analysis. We've used the site pack to complete the pond details, pond grid reference and pond name. If you've chosen to do your own pond, it's really important to complete this section yourself. We can put a tick to say that we've seen both common frog and common toad as adults at this pond. If you've also counted how many you saw, you can record this information as well. Although common frog and common toad are the main focus for this survey, we are interested in hearing about any other amphibians you saw while you were doing the survey. There's space for you to record them here, along with other notes on the survey. At the final pond in our square, we searched for adults, spawn and tadpoles, but didn't find anything. We've been searching for about 45 minutes, so we feel we've done a thorough job. At ponds where you find nothing, it's still really important to complete a recording form. Remember that we are trying to record the number of occupied versus unoccupied ponds. There is a tick box to say you didn't find any common frog or common toad on this visit. Finally, don't forget to enter your results onto the Waternet database or email them to your project officer. This is a great survey. Anyone can take part and you have a really good chance of seeing either frog or toad. If you'd like to join in by surveying one of our pre-selected squares, or you'd like to add your own ponds to the network, then please get in touch via our website. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.